Hello, my name is Kardi Teknomo. This video is part of a series of tutorial on our recent output in graph theory related to transportation science. By the means of a simple example, I will show you the mathematical formula that I and Dr. Fernandez has discovered. In this video, I will use a waving section as our example. Waving section is important in traffic engineering, in particular, in designing the length and the width of a road section, leading to a U-turn, or a roundabout, or highway ramp. I would like to show you the relationship between network utilization, in terms of flow matrix and generalized origin destination flow matrix, and network structure in terms of adjacency matrix. Network structure is an abstraction of the road network into graph vertices and edges. Utilization represents an abstraction on how we use the network. In this case, we will track trajectories of multi-agents. The agents can be vehicles or pedestrians or any object or information chunks that move through the network. Okay, let us start. Suppose we have a simple network of a waving section with eight nodes, which we give the name A, B, C, D up to eight, and eight links. We can transform network graph structure into adjacency matrix. Each eight in a network correspond to a one entry in the adjacency matrix. For instance, edge AC correspond to a one entry in this cell related to A to C. Edge CE correspond to a one entry in this cell from C to E and so on. Repeating the same technique, we get adjacency matrix of this waving section network. For simplicity, now suppose we have track only nine trajectories on how our agents use the network. Because our network is very simple, we have only four types of trajectories. The first trajectory move from A to C to E and to G. The second trajectory move from B to D to F and to A. The third trajectory move from A to C to F and to A. The fourth trajectory move from B to D to E and finally to G. The rest of other agents produces one of the four types of the existing trajectories. Thus, we can just repeat this tracking process for them. Given these trajectories, we can count the trajectories that pass through each link, and that will give us the flow. Each link will store a set of the identification number of the trajectories that pass through each link in the network. For instance, trajectory number one move from A to C to E and to G. Thus, we put number one in edge AC, CE, and EG. Similarly, trajectory number two move from B to D to F and to A. Thus, we put number 2 in the edge B, D, D, F and F, A. We continue this process for the trajectories of all nine agents. Next, let us transform the sets on each link into flow matrix set. A matrix set is a matrix where each element is not a mirror number but a set. 
we use the same way as we transform graph into matrix. For instance, link AC contains a set of trajectories IDs of 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9, and we put the same set in the element of the flow matrix set. Counting the number of elements of the flow matrix set would produce flow matrix. For instance, link AC has element of a set of 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. This set has 5 elements. Thus, we put 5 in the flow matrix from A to C. Showing the flow matrix back into a weighted graph will give us visualization on the actual flow that utilize the network. Having the trajectories, we can do more than simply showing the flow. We can also create what we call as generalized origin destination flow matrix or OD matrix for short. To develop generalized OD matrix, let us take an example of agent number one, which produces a trajectory that passes through A to C to E and to G. Since this agent passes through vertices A, C, E, and G, we can say that this agent contributes to the following origin destination flow AC, AE, AG, CE, CG, and EG. We put this information as agent number one in the corresponding element of the OD matrix set. We continue the same technique for the trajectories of all agents. The traditional OD matrix will record only the first origin and the last destination, which is A to G. The traditional OD matrix assumes that the observation period is perfect to gather all trips information. Such perfect information is not true in reality. We do not know if our observation is actually too late or too early. To be on the safe side, we can say that all vertices that has been passed by the agent will serve as origin or destination. Thus, Generalized origin destination matrix actually removes the assumption of perfect observation. Having the OD matrix set, we can now count the number of each element of the matrix set, and it will give us the OD matrix. By now, we have three matrices. First, we have adjacency matrix A represent the network structure. Next, we have flow matrix F and O3 matrix D, both represent demand or network utilization. I have discovered this simple formula that F equal to A times D, where this circle symbol represents element-wise matrix multiplication or often called Hadamard product. We can see here, when we multiply the element of adjacency matrix by the OD matrix, we will get back our flow matrix. This formula implies the flow matrix always contain lower information than the OD matrix. As a limitation, this formula works only for simple acyclic network with no alternative route. Our full formula for more general network contains another matrix T that we will discuss in the next video. Let us summarize what we have discussed so far. From the trajectories of multi-agents and the network space where these agents move, 
we can aggregate their movement into flow matrix and origin destination flow matrix. By the mean of numerical example, you have learned the relationship between the utilization of the network in terms of flow matrix and OT matrix and the network structure in terms of adjacency matrix. In the next video, I will show you more general formula that we have discovered. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. You can also visit my other tutorials from my website people.revoletu.com slash Thank you for watching.